Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Weekly Coder. I'm Chris, and in this episode we are going to continue on with Conway's Game of Life. We are now on part 5, and that means we are going to make it so that we can create our own patterns in Unity using the screen and the mouse, right? Where we last left off is basically here. We play, and we drew this awesome grid, right? Right now we can't, there's nothing we can do here. We can't click, we can't place uh, or we can't mark whether or not a cell is dead or alive. So what we want to do is we want to uh, basically add that functionality so that we can do that. So it's actually not so difficult, okay? I don't think it's actually any more difficult than anything we've already done. Um, this is probably more or less uh, a little easier than some of the other things that we have done already. So what we need to do is what I just did is I opened up the game class um, because we're going to create a new method and um, because up until now we haven't had a use for uh, user input but now we do so we want to do that so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a method call this user input and um, what we need to do is we need to make sure that uh, we check, well, we don't care. Yeah, we don't care. So right now, let's just check the uh, input. Err. Input, get mouse button down, okay? So that's the mouse button. We're gonna check to see if it's down and the uh, index here is gonna be zero. So uh, the way that the mouse buttons work is we've got zero for the left mouse and I think it's uh, one for the right. I think that's how that works. Um, but either in either way, we only care about the, uh, the left mouse button. That's the one we're gonna use. So if that has been clicked, if it's down, then what we wanna do is we wanna capture the position. Okay, so we wanna say vector two, mouse point, and we're going to grab that mouse point from the main camera screen to world point, okay? And basically what that's going to do is it's going to translate that mouse position in the screen into a position in the world, meaning a unity unit. So then what we're gonna do is we're going to create an X and Y variable. And we're gonna use mathf.round to int because we, we don't care about floats, we just, we're gonna place a square inside of the grid, um, not anywhere outside of the line. So we want to just a straight up integer. Um, so we're gonna do mouse point dot x, and then int y equals math f round to int <clears throat> mouse point dot y. Okay. So the one thing we're gonna to have to do though is we're gonna to have to check and make sure that we're actually within the bounds of the grid, okay? So the way that we do that is we're just gonna write this if statement here that says if x is greater than or equal to zero, meaning that we're greater than the left side of the screen, um, and y is greater than or equal to zero, meaning that we're greater than the bottom part of the screen, and x is less than screen width, meaning that we're less than the uh, right part of the screen, and y is less than screen height, meaning that we are less than the top part of the screen. Okay, if any of those uh, mouse clicks register within that, the confines of that area, then we are in bounds. Okay, and if that happens, then we can say grid x, y dot set alive, not grid x y dot is alive. <clears throat> so what we're doing here is we're practically killing two birds with one stone because we don't know if the cell that we're clicking on is dead or alive. Okay, meaning that you know if it's if it's alive then it's black. If it's dead you can't see it, right? Because it, we're just disabling the um, the sprite renderer. So we don't know that. So instead of writing extra code to say, hey, um, let's grab 
the cell at grid X, Y, and then see what the uh, set alive or see what the uh, is alive property is. If it's alive, then we want to set it as not alive. If it isn't alive, then we want to set it as alive. This one line of code takes care of all of that by just setting the um, uh, the uh, the is alive property to the inverse of the property of what it currently is, right? So we're setting it not equal to what it is. <laughs> Wrap your head around that. Um, so the other thing that we need to do is we need to actually set, we need to be able to like pause the game or the simulation and start the simulation. So we can use um, we can use P and B for that. Okay. So what we'll do is after this here, we'll say if input dot get key up up key code dot L not L, um, P, right, if we're pressing P, if we've pressed P, if input dot get key up, key code, um, key code dot B. So if we're pressing P, pause simulation. If we're pressing B, build simulation. Flash, resume. So now what we need to do is we need to create a variable that will basically pause and unpause the simulation, right? And let's go up to the top here and we're just gonna make this a public so that we can see if it's paused or not. And we're gonna call this, uh, actually it's gonna be of type bool and we're gonna call it simulation simulation enabled and we're gonna set that to let's start it off with false and the place we are going to put this to prevent anything from updating is basically in the update method right so we're going to right here after um, at the very first line of the update method, we're going to write if simulation enabled, right? If that's true, then we're going to want to do this stuff, the timer stuff, right? We're going to want to say, um, you know, the timer speed, we're going to count the neighbors, we're going to do our population control. But if the simulation is not enabled, then we don't want to do that. But whether the simulation is enabled or not, we do want to check user input because user input is where we check the mouse button and we also check whether or not to build or pause the simulation. So down back in here then with our pause and build buttons, we're going to, for pausing, we're going to say simulation enabled is false, right? And if we build, so resume, simulation enabled equals true. So, yeah, so that should work now. Our simulations should basically not start. It should load our pattern, the pattern that we have set as type one. <clears throat> and um, yeah, so let's do that. Let's save this, let's go to Unity And let's click play. So you see our simulation isn't doing a damn thing. Right? It's not running at all. So now let's see if this works. Look at that. We can click and we can place our own blocks. And if we click again, it disappears. So now we can build a simulation if we press B and it starts. And P will pause it, and B will resume it. 
That was quick and simple, right? Look, it's starting to look like a face. This is fascinating. I, I don't know. I love this. This this stuff is so cool. That actually turned out pretty cool. All right, so that's the cool part about it, right? You can you can then now go in here and draw your own simulations, however you want them to look, or your own patterns that you know you can then simulate, um, as in the Conway's Game of Life simulation. So that's that's pretty neat. Um, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, in the next tutorial, we are going to what are we going to do? Um, we may work on we may work on saving our simulation. So let's say that we um, we draw our own pattern and we want to save it, right? So we will work on maybe the saving functionality of that, and along with that will come maybe designing our save dialog or not. Maybe what we'll do is we'll work on the save and load functionality so that we can save out to a file and then load that file back in. I don't know. We'll see how long it takes us to do because I don't want these tutorials to last so damn long. So. Yeah, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you did, give me a thumbs up. Uh, comments go down below if you have questions. Um, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, don't forget to check out my Patreon. I post all the source code to all the files there and, you know, extra sometimes. And uh, your support means a lot to me. And uh, we'll see you guys next week.